Hi everyone, I have got, well I'm a little month behind, but I'm finally getting around to opening up my September book of the month. So I hope that you guys stick around and join me. Hi everyone, I'm Nancy and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to see you guys. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. It means more to me than I can ever let you know. I appreciate you guys so much. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're new to my channel, I hope that you would take a second and just click on that little red subscribe button over there. I'd love to have you come back and join me for future videos. Today we are going to be doing my September book of the month club. I know we just opened up August. I got my September and I still got October to open up and I'm really excited about that one. But anyway, for Book of the Month Club, I will have a link below. If you use my link, your first book should be $5. Um, after that, it would be $14.99. Shipping is free. You get a choice of, they have picked the Book of the Month for you, right? So you get a choice between five and seven books um, that they offer for the Book of the Month. And you can pick any one of those. Um, it's easy enough to just hit skip if none of those books are appealing to you. You can pick one of those books and then go into their vast library and pick some other books. And then sometimes if you say these books don't interest me, they will give you that option to pick some other books in their vast library. So it's really fun if you love to read. It's a great way to build your library if you're like me and you just read occasionally, but every now and then you just want to get into a good book. It's been a lot of fun, except for this last one that I, I just can't get into it. I don't know. When do you guys give up and say, maybe the book isn't for me? And this one really, really sounded interesting. Parisony, and it's been a couple of months, and I think I'm, yeah, I'm on my, like, page 45, and there's been a few chapters in here that were really, really good and held my interest, and then other times I'm just kind of reading and, like, just just come on, get to maybe the next page will be better. And then I'll go back to the reviews and people, and so many people said, it's a slow read. You have to wait to get into it. But when do you decide that it's not the book for you? I don't know. So anyway, I might give it a chance, but I think I'm going to start reading something else just to kind of break up that thing and get back into my habit of reading because my books are building up and I'm not exactly reading. So yeah, I got hair in my eye. It's going to drive me crazy. But anyway, got to get on with my outfit of the day, right? So, of course, it's October. Nancy has to dress up. So, I couldn't find the hat I wanted. So, I went downstairs and I grabbed one of Rick's Harley Davidson hats. So, it's a straw hat. It's got this leather band here with, of course, the uh, Harley Davidson insignia. I thought it was just a kind of understated hat. Went to my closet. This trench coat has to be just from Target. Could be 10, could be 15 years old. I've, I've had it forever surprised it still buttons but it just barely does as you can see but the costumes underneath you ready hold your eyes if, if you're young you might want to turn away um you may want to put some sunglasses on you may want to go like this it's not going to be a pretty sight but it's kind of funny all right so ready one two three four five ready there it is so it's like i'm getting dressed in a hurry this goes down to my knees and you can see it's like a lady with a trench coat. Kind of, she's not quite ready. Oh, I'm not dressed yet. Yes, I thought that would be really fun. And if I go to work next week, I'm thinking of wearing this. And on a day that I can't, no, no customers uh, are going to, well, I think we got training classes next week. So it would have to be maybe Friday if anybody's around. No customers, no vendors, just the normal people. Hopefully my bosses are there and they can see that, yeah, I'm still the comic relief. I'm still trying to get people to laugh and have a little bit of fun and maybe they will buy me a drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? Speaking of drinks, so, um, you know, you haven't seen this video yet, but I just filmed it the other day and it is spellbound and it's a petite Syrah. So I thought this was a really fun name for Halloween, Halloween wines. You know, my plan B, carry on like nothing's wrong because you couldn't get the one you wanted, get some others. And I put it in my little Lolita martini glass because I don't have many Halloween glasses, right? So I've, I've had a couple of sips, as you can see, just because I didn't want to spill it. But it's got some witches on it, so it's just a fun martini glass. 
Cheers, everyone. Mm. Yeah, I like petite Syrahs. Yeah. So anyway, back to the book of the month club. So we had five books to choose from this month. And so I picked one. There was another one that was in here that I, I kept going back and forth. Do I want this one? Do I not want that one? So I'm hoping if somebody has picked that book and read it, when I get to that book, if you would put in the comments below if you got that book and just how good it is. No spoilers, just if it's one I should really get in the future. So the first one is a romance book, and it was Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. So the quick take is, is that this is a swoon-worthy romance. It will have you questioning the laws of physics as it sweeps you off your feet in zero gravity. So B, I'm going to mess up her name, B. Koningswasser lives by a simple code. What would Marie Curie do? If NASA offered her the lead on a neuroengineering project, a literal dream come true, Marie would accept without hesitation. Duh. But the mother of modern physics never had to co-lead with Levi Ward. Sure, Levi is attractive in a tall, dark, and piercing eyes kind of way. But Levi, Levi made his feelings toward B very clear in grade school. Arch enemies work best employed in their own galaxies, far, far away. But when her equipment starts to go missing and the staff ignores her, B could swear she sees Levi softening into the alley, backing her plays, seconding, seconding her ideas, devouring her with those eyes. The possibilities have all her neurons firing. But when it comes time to actually make a move and put her heart on the line, there's only one question that matters. What would be Cunning Swasser do? Alrighty. And this is the one that really had me, like, it just sounds so, so intriguing. So this is called The Attic Child, and it's by Lola J. The quick take is it's a sweeping historical epic. The attic of a London mansion braids together two tales of identity and belonging. A hauntingly powerful and emotionally charged novel about family secrets, love and loss, identity and belonging. Two children trapped in the same attic almost a century apart, bound by a shared secret. Early 1900s London Taken from his homeland, 12-year-old Celestine spends most of the time locked away in the attic of a large house by the sea. The only time Celestine isn't bound by confines of the small space is when he is acting as an unpaid servant to English explorer Sir Richard Babington. As the years pass, he desperately clings on to memories of his family in Africa, even as he struggles to remember his mother's face and sometimes his real name. 1974. Laura, a young orphan girl born into wealth and privilege whose fortunes have now changed, finds herself trapped in the same addict. Searching for a ray of light in the darkness of the addict, Laura finds under the floorboards an old-fashioned pen, a porcelain doll, a beaded necklace, and a message carved in the wall, written in an unidentifiable language, providing comfort for her when all hope is lost. These clues will lead her to uncover the secrets of the attic. That one just sounds like it should be amazing, maybe going back and forth between the time periods, and it really sounds good. So if you have read that, let me know how it is. Killers of a certain age. Nothing ruins retirement like an old employer putting a hit out on you. But these women won't go down without a fight. Older women often feel invisible, but sometimes that's their secret weapon. Billy, Mary Alice, Helen, and Natalie have worked for the museum, an elite network of assassins for 40 years. Now their talents are considered old school, and no one appreciates what they have to offer in an age that relies more on technology 
than people skills. When the foursome is sent on an all expense paid vacation to mark the retirement, they are targeted by one of their own. Only the board, the top level members of the museum can order a termination of field agents and the women realize they've been marked for death. Now to get out alive, they have to turn against their own organization, relying on experience and each other to get the job done, knowing that working together is the secret to their survival. They're about to teach the board what it really means to be a woman and a killer of a certain age. I know that one sounds really good too. The next one uh, was a contemporary fiction. It's The Fortunes of Jaded Women by Carolyn Hunya. And it's a life-affirming novel. A surprising prophecy appends a family curse that has plagued generations of Viet women. Everyone in Orange County's Little Saigon know what that the Durong sisters are cursed. It started with their ancestor Ona, who dared to leave her marriage of a true love. So a fearsome Vietnamese witch cursed Ona and her descendants so that they would never find love or happiness. And the Durong woman would give birth to daughters, never sons. Ona's current descendant, Maya Noijin, knows the curse well. She's divorced, and after an explosive disagreement a decade ago, she's estranged from her younger sisters, Min Pham, the middle and the mediator, and Kuan Lam, the youngest, who swears she just runs humble coffee shops and nail salons, not Little Saigon's underground. Though Maya's three adult daughters, Priscilla, Thoi, and Thayo, are successful in their careers. One of them is John Cho's dermatologist. The same can't be said for their love lives. Maya is convinced they might drive her to an early grave. Desperate for guidance, she consults Auntie Hura, her trusted psychic in Hawaii, who delivers an unexpected prediction. This year, her family will witness a marriage, a funeral, and the birth of a son. The prophecy will reunite estranged mothers, daughters, aunts, and cousins, for better or worse. Alrighty, and now for the one that I picked. And it's a magical realism book. And you also get a bookmark with every book. So friends, don't let friends dog air books. And this is Sarah Addison. Sarah Addison Allen. It's a novel called Other Birds. Alrighty, so this is... It's an enchanting novel that follows the quirky, soulful stories of the unlikely neighbors of a magical apartment complex. When you find an author you love and they publish a new book after many, many years, cracking open the first page is like sinking into the arms of an old friend. I wanted to read this book slowly, absorbing each word carefully. Yet I found myself rapidly thrumming through the pages with tears in my eyes. Other Birds is the story we all need right now, lyrical and heartbreaking and layered with hope. This book cast an unmistakable spell on its readers, and Alan writes with prose that feels like pure alchemy, as if each sentence were a summoning of autumn air and long forgotten magic. The story begins with 18 year old Zoe arriving at her deceased mother's home on the island of Mallow, which is known for its marshmallow confections. A cobblestone horseshoe shaped building called Delis Whip, named after a variety of local birds, becomes Zoe's unlikely home. The other residents who love in Delis Whip are a curious melanage of outcast, ghosts, and birds. But on the first night, when one of her neighbors is found dead, Zoe's quiet summer becomes something quite extraordinary. And soon enough, the other residents of the Della Whip become a found family that Zoe never expected. So anyway, I just thought that sounded really good. And it reminds me of... You know, I knew what the name I was going to say. They, 
writer of like the Knights and Rodin and oh, it just it just reminds me of being on the beach in one of those houses and it's yeah that's all I can think of is like a nice romantic a magical book like that so the other birds right by Sarah Addison Allen so those are the books of the month for the month of September this is the book that I chose and uh, a couple of days probably for the end of October I'm going to open up my October book of the month club and this one that I might start reading now because it's kind of yeah it's like four in the series of books and I might I just might have to start that one let me know when you decide that a book isn't for you and you put it down do you ever go back to reading it do you just say no that's not for me and you just put it on the shelf and forget about it anyway that's about it for the day so I want to thank you guys so much for stopping in spending time with me even though I'm scantily clad here and uh, I got my petite Syrah in a martini glass and yeah so it's just been an interesting day and uh, yeah I'm getting ready to start a whole new week so I hope everyone is doing well and uh, you had a fabulous weekend you're looking forward to a work week without any issues just fly by during the work day and you get home and it just takes twice as long to finish the night so you can sit and you can read a book you can do a couple more hours on YouTube or just sit and relax maybe watch a favorite movie without falling asleep is that the life we all want to fa watch something without falling asleep <sighs> so anyway take care everyone thanks so much for stopping in spending some time with me take care stay safe be kind be happy enjoy life have some fun yeah so we will i'll chat again in the next video love you guys so much see you in the next video Bye bye